Hi, I'm Siobhan Sarna. I am here with Karen Krishnan. This means that you have direct access to one of the world's leading microbiomologists, who is a microbiologist. So from gut health to now skin health, and by the way, an expert in oral microbiome too, just say, saying, um, you know, he's very passionate about the things that I am very interested in that I know you are too. So thank you for being here. Karen co-founded Microbiome Labs. Microbiome Labs is still beloved and back and forth. They're still in a deeply loving relationship. Karen did move to a couple of other projects when the world's largest enzyme company purchased Microbiome Labs. So he was there and then he was like, I'm gonna exit out, you guys have it together. And now he has started a couple of other endeavors. One of which is this, SIV topical, spore-based skin serum. Yeah, the studies are coming along. There are some already for acne. We're gonna talk about that. I have noticed, it's my second bottle, that my pores are tighter, especially I have oily skin, combo, I mean, I'm like nothing. I've got laser, I've done it all. This has been blowing my mind. I also have this obnoxious spot of psoriasis, but nothing changes, okay? I've done topicals, I've done biologicals, blah, blah, blah. I am always, you know, in process of healing myself even more after all the mold exposure and all of that, but this has changed it for the better, which I'm just going to tell you, if you know anyone who has the heartbreak of psoriasis, that's a huge, huge deal. That's just some personal testimonials. Karen is going to be taking us through a presentation today. We have an exclusive lowest price in the marketplace for this, by the way, very affordable skin serum. If you don't want to buy it, that's fine. I just want you to learn today and get super excited about the new science. Karen, I'm handing things over to you. Take it away, my friend. This is our second time doing this. And um, the first time we did sell out during the presentation, I have been assured that there is stock. So thank you for that. Yep, absolutely. Well, thank you so much for having me, Siobhan. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, you know, so the first time we went through the science around leaky skin, which is kind of our primary target here around biome balancing. Um, and the good thing about your, when you're thinking about balancing the microbiome of the skin in order to avoid this condition called leaky skin, along the way, what you're doing is dramatically improving the health and, and appearance of the skin as well. Because along the way of developing leaky skin, you start to see a lot of things develop like inflammation in the skin, and inflammatory conditions that often recruit the immune system. So in the case of psoriasis, like Shivani, um, you know, talked about, and then even various versions of eczema and dermatitis that involve your immune system, those are all propagated by dysfunction in the microbes on the surface of the skin, causing a triggering effect of your immune system, your immune system showing up in that area, and damaging the layers of the skin, which is why you see the lesions, the dryness, the redness, and so on, right? So that is a pathway and a process that ends up in leaky skin. Now, on the way beyond that, even if you don't have the inflammation and the lesions and things like that, aged skin is a precursor to leaky skin, right? So hyperpigmentation, dryness, um, wrinkles, fine lines and wrinkles, um, you know, uniformity issues of the skin, textural issues of the skin, increasing pore size, all of these things are also on the road to developing leaky skin. And the reason for that is because all of those are driven by dysbiosis on the skin. Just like we focus on dysbiosis in the gut for more than a decade, uh, and we were looking at leaky gut, we started looking at what are the d types of dysbiosis that occurs in the gut that leads to leaky gut, and then what are the symptomologies and the issues that occur on the way to leaky gut. And, and as many of you know, if you've listened to a lot of my presentations through SIBO, SOS, and other areas, that there are lots of things that develop on the way to leaky gut, including things like SIBO, right? SIBO is a known symptom of dysbiosis, dysfunction in the gut, there's a marked change in the types of bacteria in the small bowel. All of that will lead to leaky gut, which will then propagate even more issues. The same thing is occurring on the skin. We do all kinds of things 
on a daily basis that harms the microbes on the skin. All the personal care products we use, or at least a lot of them, uh, even the use of antibiotics orally will impact the microbes on the skin. Um, of course, the exposure to chemicals and toxins and all that in the environment, all of that has an impact on the ecosystem of the skin itself. And then that has then a consequence of the appearance and resilience of the skin and the appearance and resilience of the skin and the dismantling of that is the road to leaky skin. And then when you develop leaky skin, the problem with that is that becomes one of the biggest marked risks for age-related dysfunction outside of the skin, right? So I, I'll tackle that study uh, for you a little bit. And because last time we went through a lot of details on leaky skin, I'll do that in a more cursory way right now, and then we can, we can feel question and answers. But what I wanna show you is the impact that you can have on the skin when you start balancing the microbiome of the skin, just like the impact you can have on your immune system and your gut, and your digestive system, when you balance the microbiome and your digestive tract, the same thing can occur on the skin when you balance the microbiome. Since the last time that I was here uh, talking about this topic, we completed a 317 subject study, a uh, consumer study with, with um, evidence and, and gathering the data. It was run by a third party, um, not run by us in, ourselves. And so it's a, it's, a, it's a consumer study on 317 subjects. So I wanna share with you some of the results of that study, which is really quite eye-opening and mind-boggling, even for us. And we, we've known that this is gonna be very impactful, right? Uh, and then we've got a number of things in the pipeline in terms of studies as well. So let me go ahead and share that content now. Okay. Um, While you're doing that, I just want to let everybody know that Isabel and Morgan from SIV, think about the name, it's like an IV for your skin. Um, that's how I had to remember it. Um, uh, this, they're in the Q&A box, by the way, answering your questions. So if you're like, oh, boy, Karen and Siobhan are multitasking, it's actually uh, uh, the wonderful women from the team at SIV. So I just wanted to let you know that I forgot to mention that. And thanks to them for that. And take it away. Yeah, and uh, Isabel and Morgan are uh, my co-founders on this. So they are uh, giving credit where credit is due. They are um, a big part of the ideation, development, and all of that. Uh, and of course, driving this technology as well. Um, Siobhan, I assume you could see this properly? Yes, it looks great. And yes, there okay. is serious boss babes. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. So the impact of the biome balancing. So again, like I said, we'll start with what the impact looks like, and then I'll, I'll then I'll dig a little bit into the the concept around leaky skin itself. Um, so when we look at balancing the skin microbiome, um, the way we do it is using spore-based quorum sensing uh, as the technology that is in this serum itself. Right now, where did this idea come from? Well, we've known for a long time, and researchers in general have known for a long time that that uh, certain spore strains are very good at uh, quorum sensing. Now, quorum sensing is the ability of microbes to read each other's signatures. So they can read the chemical signature of microbes in the environment, and then they can effectuate change in that ecosystem by doing a number of things. In the case of the body, they can alert the immune system to the presence of a dysfunctional microbe, or they can produce compounds that will bring down the growth of the microbe or enhance the growth of the microbe, depending on whether or not it's beneficial to the host. Uh, in addition, they can also just compete with the microbes for space, for nutrients and things like that, and kind of drive them off. That's called competitive exclusion, right? So there's a number of different ways that microbes can rebalance their ecosystem. And the microbes that are really good at doing that are the spore-based microbes, if you find the right strain. Keep in mind that it's not a feature of every strain of spore-based microbes. You have to find the right strain. Um, so these microbes we've been working with for a long time in the gut. Now we're starting to see, and, and we hypothesize that they probably have an impact on the skin and other areas where they're naturally found. And sure enough, we're finally getting that information and seeing the results of that, right? Now, to be, to be clear, they're not living on the skin like you might think of them living on the gut. They are transient on the skin, but for the time that they're there, when you put them on your skin, they start to go to work to understanding what the ecosystem looks like and then effectuating change in that ecosystem. Now, how is it that the spores know what to balance out, right? That's a, um, a really interesting area of, of study because 
when you look at these types of organisms that have been around for millions of years, that have been around through the course of human evolution, and they've been living in and on our system for the last million years or so, as we co-evolve with them in the environment, they have come to learn what the ecology of the host is supposed to look like, and then they effectuate change to rebalance that ecology to propagate the health of the host. It's a symbiogenic relationship, right? That's how we describe it. It's when you get two different species of, of completely different living forms together in a given ecosystem, more often than not, they find a way to cooperate and work together because it's better for the health and wellness of both, right? So what we've done is we've developed this amazing mutualistic symbiotic relationship with these microbes over time where we provide them a home, they can exist on and in us for a period of time, our immune system recognizes them, all our um, you know antigens recognize them properly, and then in return, they fix and correct our ecosystem. We've demonstrated that in the gut for almost a decade now in something like 18 published papers. We're starting to do that in a very significant way now on the skin, right? So uh, jumping in here, I'll give you, this is a, a, an example and I'll do the first couple of examples where we'll show the microbiome changes as well so you can see the impact of changing the microbes on what the skin looks like. So this is uh, subject number one. Now, if I didn't know anything about this subject and you just sent me this microbiome uh, results from the from the subject itself, I would look at this individual and I go, okay, this indi individual skin is, you know, relatively um, healthy, but this individual certainly has some inflammatory issues within the skin. And the reason we would know that is when you look at um, this uh, this baseline here, oh, I, I don't think I can point, but if you look down, down on the left-hand side, the baseline, the very first uh, microbe, you see Cutibacter macnesis, makes up 59, almost 60% of the abundance of this individual's microbes on their face, right? Now, we know from studies that when people have elevated Cutibacter macnesis, oftentimes that goes along with having acne. So knowing nothing else about this individual, I would look at their staph epidermidis. It's a, that's a healthy commensal bacteria. Okay, they're doing well there. They've got some bifolongum, some un, uh, uncultured bifidobacterium. All of those are fine. But then I look at the cutibacterium magnesis and you go, wow, okay, that is a significant amount of cutibacterium magnesis. They probably have acne lesions, right? So then we started treating this individual and I'll show you the picture of them. Um, then we started treating this individual with the, with the sieve. They were using it uh, once a day on their face, and we'll talk about how you use that. And then these are the changes we started to see. The cutie bacterium acnesis before was at almost 60%. Afterwards, and this was just in 14 days, went down to 13.2%. So significant reduction in the prevalence of that particular microbe, right? And then they've got Cornium bacterium uh, mucifacens, and that Cornium bacterium can be problematic in terms of inflammation. It wasn't very high to begin with at 2.7%, but it may be adding to the impact that this potential acne subject has. And so that came down as well. So then these are the microbiome changes. If you just showed me this and never showed me this individual, I would say on the left-hand side, looking at their before, they likely had acne lesions. And on the right-hand side, they probably saw a significant improvement in the acne and redness. And then sure enough, when you look at the individual itself, that's exactly what you see, right? So this is just a demonstration of how the microbes that you see on the skin dictate the outcomes that the skin is experiencing, right? So this individual, once we knew more about him, we found out that he's actually been on courses of antibiotics, you know, 12 week courses of antibiotics, still had issues with the acne lesions and inflammatory and inflammation on the skin. You could see here with his skin that not only are the acne lesions pretty much gone, but the redness in the non-lesion areas is also dramatically reduced afterwards, right? So um, the oil levels have, have regulated and reduced. Now, why would oil levels reduce when you're, when you're changing the microbiome on the skin? Part of that is when you have high levels of cutie bacterium and they clog up the pores, 
your sebaceous glands produce a lot of sebum, your oil produced production increases as well to try to protect the skin from this overgrowing organism, right? So then you might actually reduce the amount of oil production and you may increase the beneficial bacteria on the skin that breaks down the oil and releases fatty acids. The importance of that is that it acidifies the skin and you really want healthy pH balance on your skin. You want your skin to be slightly more acidic, a pH around four, because that's what prevents fungal and other overgrowth. So fungal and mold and so on, right? So, so that's how you maintain the healthy pH of the skin. You've got beneficial bacteria that break down the oil so you look less oily and it also reduces the pH of the skin. We saw improvement in tone, texture, clarity, and of course, reduce inflammation as well. Here's another subject. I'll show you the, um, the microbiome information on before we actually show the subject. But a couple of things, another corneum bacterium. We know that this co uh, corneum bacterium is a problem with redness and tone and texture of the skin. In fact, as you age, your propionum bacterium start to reduce and this corneum bacterium starts to increase. And that's one of the hallmarks of aging. Right, so this is what we saw in in uh, at the baseline, and then you see that the cutie bacterium, which wasn't very high in this individual, so I would say maybe they have a lesion here or there. Even there, even then, we were able to reduce it, so we probably see a, a reduction in the lesions. And then you see the corneum bacterium is virtually gone, which means this the texture and tone and the redness of this individual's skin was probably dramatically improved. And so, and then we see an increase and the presence of staph, epider uh, staph epidermidis. Keep in mind the staph epidermidis is the beneficial commensal staph that you want on your skin. That's in contrast to staph aureus. Staph aureus is a problematic staphylococcus that's on the skin. Staph aureus is a staph that's associated with dermatitis, eczema, and so on, right? And it can produce toxins, it elicits immune responses, and so on. Staph epidermidis is actually a hallmark of healthier skin. This individual didn't have any staph epidermidis that was detectable in the top seven ranking uh, in, the, in the baseline. And now it's here in the top seven afterwards. So a, a really big modulation of the skin microbiome in such a short period of time. This is in 14 days. Then when you see the individual skin, you start to see what, what I'm talking about, right? So the few lesions, she didn't have many, but she had a few red lesions. Those are all completely gone. One of the things you'll notice on the face is the hyperpigmentation, right? So you see the dark spots and you see the textural issues on the skin, right? The pores look bigger. It looks um, less smooth on the left-hand side on the before and then versus the right-hand side, it looks much smoother. Uh, the, the hyperpigmentation, the darker spots are basically gone. Um, there's much more clarity to the skin and the skin looks more colorful, right? And what a lot of people report is that their skin glows a lot more. This is all a factor of reducing that corneum bacterium and increasing the staph epidermidis, and of course, bringing down this, the cutie bacterium to a certain degree as well, right? So this is another example, and we have a number of these to show that, that demonstrates that when you affect change in the skin microbiome using a quorum sensing bacteria with the right delivery mechanism, you can dramatically improve the texture look, feel, and function, and then, of course, it ultimately the barrier function of skin itself. So here's some other examples. I'll go through them relatively quickly. You see a dramatic improvement in just 30 days in the number of lesions. Of course, she had some inflammatory lesions. Uh, you see improved hydration levels in the skin, improved the tone and texture of the skin. You see a lot of that dark spots on the forehead and all that starting to fade away uh, and much more clarity on the skin. And of course, she's much happier as well. So I don't know if the, we could say that the sieve, uh, you know, was directly impactful in making her smile, but she certainly felt better about her skin. Uh, this is a, you know, really dramatic um, acne case. Uh, and of course, this took longer, 90 days, uh, but a significant improvement in the number and intensity of the inflammatory lesions in this individual, right? And this is really important to be able to do. Uh, same thing here. This was in just 30 days, reduced lesion counts, reduced overall redness. If you just look at the tone of the skin, right? These were taken in the same light, in the same room, in the same setting. And yet you see the complete difference in tone of the skin. On the left-hand side, the skin is very red, uh, red undertones, red overtones, 
right? And then on the right-hand side, you actually see some color and pigment coming through, a little bit of glowingness, and the skin looks kind of thicker and healthier, right? That's a really important aspect of changing the microbiome of the skin. Same here in just 14 days, dramatic reduction in lesion count. This is just looking at this individual's forehead, improve, uh, improvements on the redness, skin clarity, and tone. Uh, this is a dramatic example of improvement in redness and hydration of the skin. Um, the tone and the clarity is also really great. But again, these are taken, and this individual is actually um, a skin professional, so they they know how to take the pictures under the right setting with the with the dark background, you know, with the same light, and you see the difference in the tone in just two weeks. Same here, you see better uniformity, reduction in the redness, more clarity, any little lesions are basically gone. Um, again, two weeks, significant improvement in the intensity and redness of the lesions and the count of the lesions as well. And then this individual, this is really interesting, this reduced redness and flakiness, improved skin tone and texture. This individual was didn't have acne per se, um, but in fact, uh, you know, we didn't, we didn't get to do a microbiome sampling on this individual, but what this likely is, is it's a fungal overgrowth, right? So the, there's, a, there's a type of fungal uh, overgrowth uh, called Malassansia that often will grow on the scalp as well and cause a lot of flakiness in the scalp, little red bumps all over the place. Uh, and it can cause inflammation in the body as well from growing on the head and face. Um, and this individual in just two weeks, this is a dramatic improvement, as you can tell. Again, bringing down the growth of the dysfunctional microbes by biome balancing. Um, again, tone, texture, uh, texture reduced redness, uh, significant improvement, and this is in five days, right? And we, we see a number of these cases where in four or five days, people are reporting back such a significant change in their appearance. Um, lesion count, this is two months, uh, but completely cleared all the lesions. Also, didn't end up leaving any sort of uh, dark spots on this individual. So sometimes when you when you um, when the lesions of the bright red inflammatory lesions go away, they can leave a little hyperpigmentation spot. But they didn't. This individual didn't see any of that at all. And then all the redness around the nose and around the mouth area has reduced quite a bit as well. Two weeks, some, a significant reduction in this individual. You can actually start to see difference in the pores. The picture is clear enough where you can look at the nose and the cheek and you start to see a reduction in pore size, right? We're actually doing some case studies on this really high level uh, camera system that they have in certain med spas and all that where you put your face in a thing and it takes really high detailed pictures that can actually measure your pore size. So we'll have some quantifiable data, but we do see this kind of effect quite a bit where you see the pore size changes noticeably even with the with the naked eye and so this uh, a lot of this came from um you know early cases that we were doing and then and then as i mentioned earlier we did a 317 uh participant study um the duration was about 30 days we did it in the us it was done to a third party um the the distribution was basically people from 18 to 42 i think years old or so um, and then, and then there were female was 95, male was 4%, um, it, 4 or 5%. Um, and, and basically, you know, this third party will recruit people based on our criteria. The criteria was for people that experience redness, uh, occasional acne and any sort of, um, you know, skin irritation issues. Right. So, so this is 317 subjects. Uh, I do want to play you this. It's, uh, and, and this the, the club is called the Home Tester Club, the company that administers this third party testing. Um, and they just made a really cool ad out of the first set of um, participants that completed. So I want to play this if you can hear it. The sieve biome balancing serum. It's very easy to add to your daily skincare routine. It feels very weightless. Love how moisturized and smooth it makes my skin. My overall skin hydration has been phenomenal. It has reduced redness that I've been dealing with. It has minimized my acne as well as my fine lines and wrinkles. My skin looks amazing. I definitely recommend it to anyone. I started you. So that was fun. Um, I don't know if you could hear that. It, it, it seemed very quiet to me. But yeah, so I could hear it anyway. Yeah. You could. Okay. Awesome. Good. So let me give you some overall um, data from this particular uh, study itself. 
So 95.2% of the participants showed an improvement in hydration in that 30-day period, right? And they had to rate kind of their improvement. So 95% of them did. Uh, 91%, so almost 92% showed, uh, said that the skin, their skin looked more youthful. Uh, in that short period of time. And 93.9, almost 94% said that their skin looked and felt more nourished uh, in that short period of time. We also saw that um, 89, so 90% essentially uh, users saw a reduction, a noticeable reduction in inflammation in the skin. 90% saw an improvement in complexion of the skin and 87% reported um, more tone and more evenness to the skin as well. Again, all of this is in a 30-day period. And 86% of them uh, would recommend Sibs Bio-Imbalancing serum, serum to their friends and family. Uh, so overall, just kind of overwhelming results. Uh, we were even more surprised about it than, than we thought we would be. We thought maybe anywhere around 50% effectiveness on any of those parameters would be very uh, great. Uh, we, don't, we did not expect that it'd be in the, in the 90s in most of those. So that was really great. Lots of great testimonials. And again, we'll, we'll send you guys some of these PowerPoints, uh, some of these slides as well, so you can take a look at these on your own. But again, to emphasize the way this works is through quorum sensing, right? This is the regulation of virulence factors, biofilm formation, gene expression that can be effectuated from one bacteria to another. And bacillus being one of the oldest microbes on the planet Earth, and, and certainly one of the most uh, prevalent uh, microbes that humans have co-evolved with both inside us and on us have co-evolved this, this amazing capability of quorum sensing in and on the body. We've been taking advantage of it for the last 10 plus years in the gut. Now it's time to really utilize this on the skin as well. So the benefits of this in general, in short, are really about building resilience. So establishing a healthy skin foundation, right? And that starts with a healthy, balanced skin microbiome. Without a healthy, balanced skin microbiome, we're, we cannot have resilience. We're gonna have vulnerable skin, skin that is vulnerable to uh, opportunistic infections, to toxin productions, to and then all the way up to leakiness and barrier dysfunction of the skin. We also wanna deliver relief to people that are dealing with existing skin issues so that they don't go too far down the road of trying too many things and maybe using some things that may be even more harmful to the skin microbiome that won't necessarily provide them the, the benefit that they want. And then supporting the balance, right? Your skin has its own unique microbiome. Your percentages of different microbes will be different than other someone else. Where you live matters. Are you in an arid climate? Are you in a very humid climate? What your home looks like, what the people around you looks like. Do you have a dog? All of those things will dictate what your own unique microbiome balance is on your skin. But what's beautiful about these quorum sensing bacteria is they adapt to your type of ecosystem, right? And they, they have that capability of doing that. So this is why we see 90 plus percent effectiveness rate on, on, a, on a study as large as 317 subjects is because it's adapting to everyone's own ecosystem, right? And it's making the change as needed for that individual. Uh, it's applicable to all. We haven't found anyone that shouldn't use it. Um, it's not It's not contraindicated with any other um, treatment or any other thing that you might use in your own personal care routine. There's a significant ease of use. It's once a day. Uh, if you're using it on your face, it's one drop on either side of your face. Maybe depending on what you're going after, you might do one drop on the forehead and one drop on either side of the face and rub it in. You're basically using it once a day after you clean your face and before you put on moisturizer. Most people do that in the evening before bed. You can do it in the morning if that's more convenient, but evening before bed is what most people do. Um, and then it's it's effective and you start to see results pretty quickly. I showed you a number of the, you know, uh, four, uh, seven day, five day type of results, which of course makes you feel good in the choices that you do and you make when you see the effect uh, coming on pretty quickly. So here's what's in the product. You've got the bacillus endospores. There are two unique bacillus endospores in the right uh, formation. We keep that information uh, proprietary, but these are bacillus probiotics. They don't act as a probiotic on the skin, but they can be consumed as a probiotic. But there are two bacillus endospores. Uh, it's got squalane, which is a biomimetic oil. So it mimics the oils on your skin. 
Uh, it's got coprolic acid, which is a mix, a triglyceride mix um, that really is smooth and, and mixes and blends well into your skin. It gets carried a little bit deeper uh, past the um, stratum corneum, which means that it can carry the spores in a little bit deeper. And it's got uh, glycerol uh, caprolate, which is a natural plant-based plant emollient that just kind of helps uh, create the structure of the serum itself. It's got nice plant-based fatty acids. It restores the oil in the skin and regulates the skin moisture. So the so the baseline tech uh, the base uh, line base of the technology that carries a bacillus in itself is great for your skin, great for hydration and all that. Um, but then it it carries the bacillus and it doesn't interfere with the bacillus and its function at all, right? So you use it, um, you can use it as a toner, you can you use it as a bioimbalancing serum, but you use it in between uh, moisturizing, uh, sorry, washing your face using the toner, then you go with the bioimbalancing serum, then moisturizer, then SPF, right? Um, if you don't use a toner, of course, um, you know, you would just use it after washing your face. So this is the sequence in which you would use it. You always use it right before your moisturizer, but after your face has been cleaned. Now, can you use it on the body? This is a common uh, question we get. And, and that's where I use it even more uh, frequently than on my face, because for me, um, you know, maintaining a healthy skin microbiome in the most diverse part of my uh, of my skin, which is on my body, is really critical. And I'm also in you know places like gyms and all that where you pick up a lot of staff and staff aureus, which can be problematic. Um, and so I the way I use it on my body is I, I use lotion all the time, of course, uh, after I, I I bathe and I shower. Uh, I have a big heaping full of lotion on my hand before I apply it. I put about four or five drops of sieve on there and I mix it into the lotion and then I apply it all over. I might do some spot treatments in areas like if you had an ingrown hair somewhere and it's like inflamed and irritated, I would do a spot treatment on that and it actually dramatically improves it in as little as like uh, 24 hours, right? So you could spot treat any area in your body. Um, I've got, I've had like kind of an itchy eczema-like spot on my lower ankle because I was wearing this weird little ankle bracelet thing that that, that I'd gotten and it kind of irritated my skin. Um, so I removed that and then it, it's been kind of this irritating patch and I've used a sieve on it now for the last couple of weeks and it's you know dramatically better. It's like 90% better. And it's been there irritating for like the last um, you know 10 months. So this is a special thank you code for all of you that are here. Uh, it's Siobhan15 for 15% 15 off the sieve. Uh, and if you go to the sibcare.com, that's where you can purchase it directly. Um, this is the uh, the lowest price we're offering right now on the market. And for most people that are using it on their face once a day, each tube will last you about uh, a month. So it'll last you close to 30 days. If you're doing like me and you're, and you're using it on your body and your face, one tube will probably last you about two and a half to three weeks. Um, and so, you know, you could you can get more than one in that case to to satisfy that. Now, you don't also need to necessarily use it every day on your body. Um, if you're using it on your body and you feel like you're going through it too fast, you can definitely do it two or three times a week. You don't have to do it every single day, right? Because these spores will hang out on your skin for a few days uh, and continue to do their work um, over that period of time. So um, do we want to jump into anything about leaky skin? Yeah. Can we? Can you pause for just a second and just um, mm -hmm. um, stop sharing the screen for a second? Thank yeah. you. I, that was great. That was a lot, a lot. So I have a couple of announcements to make. Number one, I know some people are having a hard time because we might have just broken the internet. Um, so hang in there. Uh, Deanna's saying the link didn't work for her, but I just used it and it did work for me. The other thing, so take a breath, try again, switch browsers maybe, go to Chrome if you're on Safari, um, something like that. Um, we don't know the postage amount shipped to the rest of the world. They do ship internationally. Um, the other thing people are asking, Karen, is it's one drop per side of face. How, 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 what's the dosage for the face? And also, don't forget, shake it when you get at home to activate those spores. Yeah. Yeah, the shaking is important. So, you know, if you look at the bottom here, it's kind of you, you can kind of see through it a little bit. Um, what what will happen is if you're storing it like this um, yeah. over a 24 hour period, you might see some of the spores settling in there, which will look like kind of a creamy solid 
thing. So you, you shake it uh, or you tap it on your hand and shake it. Sometimes you might get a little bit of a, a clogging in the tip and that tapping becomes important for tapping and shaking, right? This is also a little bit of a diaphragm. So the best way to apply it is you kind of just tilt your face you, you hover it over your face, you'll see a drop start coming through. And if a drop, drop doesn't fall, you can give this a little bit of a push and it'll drop will fall down. And then it's one drop on either side of the face and just rub it in. As I mentioned, if you've got um, you know a lot of issues and you wanna get a slightly higher dose, you can go drop in either side of the face and a drop on the forehead. You rub it in your face, chin, neck, um, you know, decolleté area, that's all perfectly fine. Then if, again, if you want to use it on your body, I go with about four or five drops in a handful of lotion, mix it in and it tends to work. And I said, I spot treat as well, right? So if I get like a ingrown hair or something like that, that like an irritated inflammatory spot, I'll put it on there. Um, and, uh, and usually within a day, it's like significantly better. Um, you know, the, uh, the postage costs, to the UK, I think uh, Morgan's answering that. Uh, we could we could look back and see. I don't know if uh, Isabel. I think Isabel's on here. Um, she has shipped to the UK before, but I don't I don't know if she has it on record somewhere how much it costs. But um, you know, my guess is it's. I well, I don't even want to venture to guess because yeah. it'd be impossible to yeah. say. Um, spot. That's not what you're here for. You're here to talk about the skin microbiome. Yeah. <laughs> we'll hear the shipping stuff. Um, okay. I have a lot of questions for you, but the other thing that I wanted to mention is they did me a huge favor um, that I am sharing with everybody, and that is that even AutoShip is allowing the 15% discount. So they literally manually adjusted that because normally if they do get a discount to anybody out in the world, which by the mm -hmm. way, this is the biggest one, um, they do not deactivate that. They, they don't allow it on AutoShip, but for us today... It is available even on the auto ship. Now, I also just want to tell you, for those of you who don't know my little backstory here, I used to be a host on Home Shopping Network for 24 years, and I sold everything from jewelry to skincare to lawnmowers to clothing, blah, 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 all the things. To have this at $68 then with 15% off and have it bring those kinds of results that quickly with everyone's results going to be varied, this is a steal and a half. You can barely go to the grocery store or the drugstore to get a serum at this kind of price these days. So, uh, I mean, there's, this is a, I mean, I'm blown away at how affordable it is. Cause when Kieran was first telling me about this, I thought, okay, okay. If it's $149, I'll be <laughs> like, yeah. this, like if any, any of you are like skincare fanatics, like I am, um, like, you know, the cost of these things. And the before and after. So I, my whole career has been about before and afters. And these are phenomenal and highly regulated and very carefully done. And there's no trick of the eye and all that. But then also these are fast. Mm -hmm. 14 days, 30 days, 60 days. The gal with that really, really intense infection scenario um, that you showed us, 90 days. That's fast. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I just to point all of that out. Um, and then the, um, the interesting thing about the price is that, you know, we, we came from the supplement industry rather than the, the skincare industry. And so when, when we did, when Morgan, Isabel, and I went to our first um, aesthetics skincare show, and we were there with the Civ product, uh, we had all these estheticians and skincare professionals coming in, and they were so excited and and, and um, excited to learn about the skin microbiome and start looking at something that can affect the skin microbiome. And, and then they would always say, well, what does it cost? And when we tell them, they were shocked. It's shocking. And then we were shocked that they were shocked because right. they're well, like, oh, I thought this would be 200 more. bucks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right, right, exactly. Yeah, and we're like, shoot, uh, all right, but never mind. We'll just keep the price yeah. where it is. Yeah. Um, because we really, at the end of the day, what I want is I want for people to use it everywhere. Right. You know, um, because we're 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 missing a key fundamental part of our, um, you know, ancestral behavior, which is, you know, being in contact with the dirt. Uh, it's it's very similar to the to the gut microbiome stuff where we used to eat off the land, right? We used to forage for food, dig for food, gather, hunt, and we would get all of these amazing microbes into our system through those behaviors. The same thing as we lived in dirt. 
right? We, we slept in huts, we slept on the ground and all of that. We bathed in rivers and streams. So our skin was constantly exposed to these types of form sensing outdoor microbes and they no longer are. And I think that has a huge impact on our overall outcomes. And as it turns out, if you look at some of the data on, on the impact that leaky skin has on total health, it becomes clear that this is likely another one of those components that we have to address if you have air, uh, issues even outside of your skin. So are you ready for some questions? Go ahead mm -hmm. and click orders. And by the way, what time is it? It's 3.43, we have about 15 minutes left. I'm gonna to get to your questions, but we also have an in-webinar bonus, meaning that if you purchase during our time with Karen, and I usually like to give you an extra little 15 minutes, you will get his PowerPoint presentation that is just reserved for people who do purchase during this next half hour. And it gets better. I have a two-part microbiome masterclass for gut microbiome from Karen that we are also going to include as a in-webinar bonus. So what that means is if you decide to pick it up in the next 30 minutes, um, all you would do is send your proof of purchase to info at SIBO SOS. Um, webinar only bonus one, right? Thanks. Um, but, uh, so, uh, Clarissa, can you put our email address in there? Thank you. Love you. Okay, here we go. Um, I was born with eczema and as a child had serious bouts with it and so did one of my sisters, an inherited condition. I go through periods of clear skin, yet my palms... Uh, especially seem to have weak skin barrier. My son has the same situation. How would you explain this and will your product help to create a stronger barrier? Yeah, so um, the data on eczema is starting to become more and more clear in terms of what is driving eczema, right? Um, in, in almost all cases of eczema, it's associated with an overgrowth of staph aureus on that part of the skin. Uh, there's a reason why you can have it and you can have eczema here and then not on this hand. Right. Or you can have it on this part of your hand, but not on this part of your of your arm up here. So you can have it and then inches away, you don't have it. It's really about what kind of microbes have colonized that area of the skin. And in most cases, it's an overgrowth of Staph aureus. And, and in general, what tends to happen is you've got Staph aureus that's colonized that part of the of the skin. Um, it's creating toxins and things that can elicit an immune response. The immune system is coming to that area, and then the immune system is attacking that area, knowing that there's something problematic there. And the immune system is damaging things like the ceramide layer, which maintains the moisture in that area. It's damaging the skin cells. It's damaging the uh, the epidermis. And so then you start to get this lesion formation, the dryness, the flakiness, the itchiness. That's all from damage to the skin that your own immune system is doing, but the trigger for it is the presence of that microbe. So then if you start using a form sensing serum in that area to start shifting the microbial eco ecosystem there, you'll start changing what is the base permanent microbe in that area, and it can dramatically help with the with the condition so that and and is it inherited it, it's not genetically inherited necessarily it's that your own ecosystem when you know if you're born and you're let's say you're a mom and you've got uh, staph aureus on your hands the skin to skin contact and all that with your kid you're passing that on right and so that increases the risk that the child will also have colonization by these microbes okay will this help with eczema around the mouth yeah, so a lot of times eczema around the mouth and, and the nose area is often called perioral dermatitis. Um, and perioral dermatitis is an issue of um, Staph aureus and potentially an overgrowth of certain types of fungus. Uh, and it can absolutely improve that. Actually, we had a, uh, a, a case recently, one of our doctors out of Beverly Hills that has a clinic. Uh, he has a patient that he's been trying to manage with perioral dermatitis for over a year. Nothing has budged the issue, right? The, all the inflammation lesions around the mouth and nose. Um, he's gone the prescription route, the steroids and all that, that didn't work. Then he tried a number of natural things. Um, 30 days of the sieve and he said it was 85% gone. And he's never seen it like that. And he placed a, a, a large order immediately. So that, yeah, that I think it can really, really help. That's amazing. Does it work for rosacea? Uh, we don't have as many cases for rosacea, but in general, inflammation and redness seems to improve quite a bit. 
right? Um, so I can't necessarily, actually, we, we do have one strong before and after for rosacea, which is not on the PowerPoint, uh, which I'm sure maybe afterwards uh, Morgan or Isabel can send. Um, but, but, but absolutely, I think um, that it can, it can certainly help. It may not eliminate the rosacea. How is the skin microbiome influenced by the gut health? Is it important to heal the gut first prior to using this product to get maximum results? Um, so there's a gut skin axis, right? What does that mean? That means that depending on what your gut is like, you have a, a, a variation of skin um, uh, you know, risk factors, right? So let's look at it from two perspectives. Number one is the immune system. And number two is the nutrient support for the skin. So take the immune system, for example. If your gut is dismantled and messed up, you've got an immune system that's highly inflammatory, what that's going to mean is that you have a higher tendency to elicit an inflammatory response on your skin when it's when it's triggered by any kind of stimuli, right? So whether that stimuli is a dysbiotic microbe like a Staph aureus or that stimuli is wearing a backpack, right? Some people, they wear a backpack all day long and then afterwards they have a really irritated rash on their shoulders, or you rub up against something like a tree bark or a type of material, and all of a sudden you've got a rash there that, uh, that someone else wouldn't have had. What that indicates is that you've got an overtly inflammatory responding immune system that any sort of stimuli, it doesn't tolerate it, it responds in an inflammatory manner. So you can reduce that by improving the gut. Right. Uh, then the second part of it is a nutrient component, because, of course, your skin is fed from the inside out. Your skin grows from the inside out. So the nutrients that your skin needs, the, the vitamins, the minerals, the enzymes and even things like ceramides and so on come from the gut. And so if your gut's not absorbing, assimilating, producing those types of nutrients, the short chain fatty acids and all that, your skin's not going to have the proper ability to grow and turn over and all that. Now, do you do it in sequence? Do you go, I'm going to fix my gut first and then deal with my skin? I would absolutely do it in parallel, right? There's absolutely no reason to do it in parallel and let your skin continue to dismantle itself, right? Uh, I would absolutely do it in parallel. And I think that's where you're going to see the biggest bang for your buck. Grab some Megaspore uh, at, at yep. Microbiome Labs and Clarissa will put the link in there for 15% off on your entire cart there. And then do it for, uh, topically with the sieve or SIV, however you want to pronounce it. Um, okay. Uh, good. Lisa M is basically saying she realizes she needs to do both. I have dark marks and sometimes itchy from wearing glasses on the bridge of my nose. Um, and I've wiped off the glasses as well as in case of sweat. If you have a colonization there, like you really, like you got to sanitize the F this crap out of those glasses. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Here. Well, you know, that, that could be an example of a stimulus, right? So, so let's say you've got um, compromised skin microbiome in that area because, of course, all the years of wearing glasses and that irritation on that part of the skin. And a lot of times what we do, what we tend to do, we touch our face a lot to begin with, right? But a lot of times if you're wearing glasses all day, you might pull them off and you might do this thing, right? Yeah. Where you're squeezing and pushing in this area for a concentrated amount of time with, and you're taking microbes from your hand, which is full of filthy microbes that you're touching all over the place and you're concentrating it in that area and then you're putting your glasses back on and, and that microbe is trapped there under the glasses. So you could very well have dysbiosis just in those regions. And when you have dysbiosis anywhere on your skin from a microbiome perspective, you're gonna compromise the ability of that skin to be tolerant to stimuli. Right. And so the stimuli in this case is the constant touching of your glasses to that bridge area. And, and then you're probably touching it with your hands as well. And so it doesn't it's not that surprising that that area would be red and maybe even discolored, like you said, because one of the things that occurs when you have a lot of inflammatory damage and dysbiosis in any given area of the skin, you get senescence. Senescence is the zombie cells developing. Right. So your melanocytes in that area become senescent and they start producing pigment without dying and turning over. This is also a, a feature of aging, aging skin, where you get senescence in your melanocytes throughout your face. This is where age spots come from, right? Now, senescence is also driven 
by dysbiosis on the skin microbiome, because one of the very important roles of a healthy, balanced skin microbiome is producing antioxidants and reduce oxidative damage and free radical damage in your skin. And it's the oxidative damage and the free radical damage that cause your melanocytes to become senescent. This is why too much UV exposure without sunscreen and protection will drive age spots and dark spots, right? People all know that. We all know that inherently. Well, what is it about the UV exposure? It's the, the oxidative damage that it causes to the skin. And that's why your melanocytes can become senescent. So you want to make sure you balance your skin microbiome to avoid that. So is that like a liver spot? It's like a liver spot, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, uh, okay, let's see here. Um, can it work for scleroderma? You know, it could. Uh, we don't have any trials on it. Um, there's microbial issues with scleroderma as well. Um, so it may not be the, you know, the, the, the end all of it, uh, but it can certainly help the resulting skin look better. And so it, can you use SIV or SIV on a rash caused by an allergic reaction to an antibiotic? You can, yeah. Um, now, if, if it's an allergic reaction to an antibiotic, hopefully the rash goes away once you cease the antibiotic, right? right. Um, and that's something you should look at before you're, you're trying to treat the, the rash with, with something like SIV. Um, hopefully, if it's just an allergic reaction to the antibiotic, you see, see stopping, you stop the antibiotic and then the, the rash should go away within a couple of days. Now, if it doesn't go away, then you know, okay, I've made some sort of unfortunate permanent change to the microbiome in that area, right? Maybe the antibiotic caused enough die off in that part of your skin that, you know, you, you've, you've got now an increase in opportunistic organisms like fungus or something. In that case, you absolutely can utilize something like sieve or sieve uh, in particular to uh, improve that area. So I just want to do a shout out to several people, Latika, Joanne, uh, Carla, uh, la, la, la. a lot of people have been placing orders. Be sure to, uh, so I don't have your name unless you send me your proof of purchase. And in that case, then we'll send you the link for his slide presentation, as well as the um, two part masterclass he did on uh, gut microbiome. And that people have been paying like $59 for, for it's worth, it's priceless. Um, but Clarissa, I did not tell Lisa that we were going to do the slide deck. So if you don't get it right away, check back with the link we're going to send you. So it'll populate once my team is able to, to do that. So just confirming, it does a this is reducing the appearance of liver spots. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. Great. All right. Um, so yes, that is the same thing as an age spot, what we're saying here. How do I mm -hmm. buy it? Janice, go to the chat in Zoom and you will see it there. Um, let's see. The I think the person who had the glasses there, I'm not sure if this is it, but I fell nine months ago on a nose piece cut in the skin. I initially had a large bump under the skin that did not go away. I received laser treatments to the area like 10 times that reduced the size of the bump to about the size of a pea. Would SIV help to reduce the size of the bump? Is it a scar, Pam? That's that's my yeah. Question. If it's yeah. if it's scar tissue, it may not. If it's if it's a infected or um, you know occluded uh, pore or something, then yeah, it can absolutely do that. Um, it's certainly not going to harm it. It's certainly not going to cause any further issues. So it's worth a try on it. Um, you know, but but if, again, if it's a scar tissue because it's been there for so long and you know, it's been treated and all that, it, it's likely not going to do anything for scar tissue. Okay. Uh, does it help vitiligo? Um, that we don't know. Uh, we, I can't think of a case of vitiligo that we've used it with. Okay. Um, we know okay. that it's an autoimmune issue, uh, yeah. which, which likely has as much to do internally as it does externally. Um, so I can't think of a, a, an irrational to say with a great degree of confidence that yes, it could help, but um, so, I, you know, I, I would say it it's not going to harm it for sure, but it can't hurt. Do you need to keep it in the yeah. fridge? You need to keep it in no. the fridge? No, no not at all. Will it help psoriasis? What are your thoughts about the psoriasis results? Yeah, um, I, I think it's it, it helps. It helps eczema a little bit more than it helps psoriasis in terms of time. Um, 
you know, psoriasis has a lot more immune activation going on. So I would say it can certainly help her psoriasis, but I would take an even more holistic approach to psoriasis if that's the condition you're doing, meaning you have to deal with the gut as well in psoriasis. I think eczema, you can largely deal with it topically. Um, and, and we've seen uh, a, a tremendous amount of improvements of people with, with eczema lesions or dermatitis type lesions. Uh, and, and just using it on the outside. But with psoriasis, absolutely do things like the total gut restoration or the mega spore, mega pre, those are all gonna go a long way to modulating the gut microbiome and the immune response from the inside and then utilize this on the outside. I think you need to do a one-two punch on something like psoriasis. Tina, Sand, thank you, thank you. Uh, Joe, we got you. Um, Please go to the chat because if you scroll up, you'll see the 15% off at Microbiome Labs as well. Um, okay, let's see. I have Margellan's disease, the epitome of leaky skin. I've been using SIV since introduced. It has been helpful cleaning the stuff that drains from my skin, though still very leaky skin. I tried skipping a day without SIV or SIV and was miserable. I can definitely tell the difference. Are there any studies in the future for people with Margellan's disease? And can you explain what that is? We, we don't have a plan for it. Um, the, um, it, it because it's relatively rare. Uh, it's not it's not as common of a skin condition as say acne and dermatitis. Um, so we didn't we don't have it in our pipeline, but but perhaps we could we could connect with her a little bit and understand a little bit more about how it's helping the condition. Um, and and that in that case, the skin seems to be leaky in in both ways, in two ways, right? In uh, in terms of of things excreting out. Uh, and then things leaking through as well. There's an issue with the matrix, the um, the, the protein matrix in the skin itself um, that, that causes an inherent, what seems like a permeability or leakiness to the skin. Um, and I don't think the, the etiology or the cause of it is very well known, um, but, but certainly microbes will play a role in it to some degree or the other, right? Uh, it's, it's, it's hard to say anything on the body, especially big organ systems like the skin, where microbes aren't involved in some degree. So I'm so happy to hear that it's improving or it's helping at least to some degree. Um, and maybe we should connect and see if we can uh, understand the response. Yeah. I'm about to sneeze, but how can they reach you on Instagram? Yeah, yeah. Reach out to me on Instagram okay. at Kieran Biome uh, and or go to at Civ Care as well. Uh, and and ex actually, I, I should mention this. We're putting out a lot of really important educational information on skin health uh, on at Civ Care. Uh, we've actually spent you know the last couple of months doing a lot of recording of information. Uh, Isabel is doing it. Morgan's doing it. I'm doing it as well. Uh, our, our whole goal, like I've done with other uh, brands, is really we want to educate people, right? So so go to AdSivCare, and uh, if you follow it, you'll see all of the things we're posting every day. And reach out to us there, um, and, and then let's connect and talk about what you're seeing in terms of the, the condition so that it may give us a clue as to how to study it. Okay, I said something wrong the other the earlier. Uh, Isabel, I thought you were adjusting that on the auto ship, so... That's not been done. That's fine. Just use the 15% off your single order. There you go. Sorry about that. I thought it was, um, but nevertheless, getting the first one, at, it's still only $68, but then getting the first one at the 15% off uh, using code Siobhan15 is still phenomenal. Thank you. Um, does it help with skin cancer and precancerous skin? First of all, guys, none of this is medical advice. Please do not like go, oh, my dermatologist sucks. Bye. You know, talk to your providers, include them, educate them about this. My goodness, please do. So let's talk about the C word, please, about skin cancer and precancerous conditions. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's that's such a difficult area, right? So it depends on the drivers and all that. Um, will it will it harm uh, precancerous uh, skin? And I'm not sure how you define precancerous really well, right? Because um, if you're if you're getting biopsies and you're getting a, a diagnosis of cancer on the skin on the skin, um, then it's definitive cancer, right? Or or if it's some part of the pathology where it's precancerous, meaning it's not yet malignant and maybe it's on the way to malignancy. Um, you know, so it really depends on the condition. I would say if the skin is broken or damaged, then I wouldn't recommend using it because we haven't treat we haven't tested it on broken skin, you know, where you have 
exposure to to uh, blood. Um, we haven't tested it on that, um, but if it's just you know discoloration, lesions, things like that, it shouldn't be an issue. We have no idea if it does anything for cancers. That's not an area that we're looking into at all, so we can't say that it does anything for that. Okay, I just said to honor the questions. I just wanted to do that. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. What happens if you overuse the product on areas? What can you expect to have happen? Well, first of all, uh, we haven't seen anything. I, I actually, you know, I, I mentioned earlier that um, I, I use three drops on my face, right? So uh, I know initially when, when we developed it, Isabel was really the first user and she was using one drop on each side of the face. And that's become kind of the standard uh, in that 317 subject study, we, we, we recommended using one drop on each side of the face. So that's what most people do. Uh, but like like everything I'm involved in, I like to kind of push the boundaries a little bit and see. Um, so I've started using three drops on my face. And then for the last month or so, I've been using three drops twice a day. Uh, I use it in the morning and evening. Um, you know, it's I, I don't think, I think there's some diminishing returns there. It's not like you're gonna accelerate a massive transformation on your face. Um, but there's also no negative thing that happens. And, and it wouldn't, right? These are um, transient microbes that exist on your skin for a period of time. They effectuate change in a positive way. If there's no change that's needed, they don't really do a whole lot. Um, and so, or they just maintain the, the existing environment, right? So um, I don't think there's a, any issue with using it too much. Oh, and we also did uh, derm safety studies on this to validate that it's not uh, irritant to the skin. Um, and, and so we know that because it's not an irritant to the skin, it's not like you can overuse it and irritate uh, your skin. So I, it, I think it'll be perfectly fine. Uh, we talked about how it does help with psoriasis. It, it, they're, they haven't studied it yet, but they're working on that. It takes a little bit longer than the eczema. So he just talked about that about five minutes ago. Mm -hmm. um, and and psoriasis take a, a more holistic approach where you're definitely going after the inside as well, the gut. Yeah. Um, let's see. I just had that very, very important question. Uh, they're all important. Don't get me wrong. Um, does it impact the hormones in any way? Not that we know of. I don't think it would. Um, hormones are going to be very tightly regulated uh, between the uh, the organs that produce the hormones. So you know whether it's adrenal hormones, sex hormones, the the gut and the liver. Right. That's really the big uh, triad there of hormone regulation. So I don't think it will um, impact hormones. I never said there was free shipping. Just FYI, Candice, you are getting the fifteen percent off. Um, so from sixty eight. I can't do that math. I did it earlier. It was good. It's okay. <laughs> okay. Um, can you use it in the groin area, like at the underwear crease where it touches the skin? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, no issue there at all. Uh, you can use it in any sensitive area. Um, there's no, there's no real areas to avoid. We say, obviously don't drip it in the eye because we haven't tested it inside the eye. Um, and, and it's not designed to be consumed. So we say don't consume it. And the other thing we say is don't use it on broken skin. Um, and again, that's because we haven't tested it in those, in those capacities. Uh, but any sort of sensitive area, you know, um, groin area, um, ev everywhere in your seat, everything, it's perfectly fine. No issue there at all. Okay. Guys, I just was told that my hot water heater is leaking, so I need to go. Uh oh, <laughs> wonderful spending some time with you all. Thank you very, very much, Karen. Thank you to everyone who stayed to the end and um, Isabel and Morgan. Thank you all so much. Please take advantage of the savings. Please email us at info at SIBOSOS.com with your purchase um, for the next like 10 more minutes. Uh, I know this is just a live, those of you who attend bonus. And if you weren't able to attend live, we really appreciate you watching the replay. Um, and you're still getting the 15% off for a limited time. Um, so thank you all. Thank you, thank you, thank you. If you do order in the next 10 minutes, you're getting the presentation from Karen. It'll take a little bit to load up to our system. And you're also getting the two-part masterclass on a microbiome biologist perspective of the microbiome about the gut. It's awesome. Mwah! Thank you. Thank, thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Okay, bye. Bye-bye. I got to go. I got to call the plumber. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you next time. Thanks, Clarissa. Clarissa, I'm going to email you when I can meet in Zoom. All right, peace out. Thank you.